Team 6 presents Tuckman's stages of group development. In 1965, psychologist Bruce Tuckman described the path that high-performing teams follow during their life cycle. These stages of group development were originally forming, storming, norming, and performing, but have since been expanded upon to include an adjourning stage. Tuckman stages are an important tool to help groups reach their potential. Behaviors of team members will indicate which stage the team is in. In turn, leaders can take appropriate actions to help improve the team's performance. It's also important to note that these stages do not occur in linear fashion, nor are they restricted by time. In the forming stage, focus is placed on developing relationships. Group members attempt to bond by identifying similarities in each other. Roles and responsibilities on the team are not clear yet. As acceptable behaviors are established, controversy and conflicts are avoided. Additionally, an attempt is made to understand the task at hand and how to approach it. The leader needs to provide clear objectives for individuals on the team. To advance to the next stage, members need to risk the possibilities of conflict. The storming stage is marked by competition and conflict. Team members challenge authority, jockey for position in the group, and argue as their natural working styles emerge. Sometimes conflict occurs from the lack of managerial support, or weak relationships with teammates. The leader should remain positive and firm when their authority is challenged, provide support to insecure staff, and resolve conflicts quickly. Personality assessments such as the Myers-Briggs are helpful to educate the team on different strengths it has. To progress to the next stage, team members need to focus on communication and adopt problem-solving mentality. There is often overlap between storming and norming, but in this stage a goal emerges and the group becomes more cohesive and open. Team members have agreed upon their roles and group procedures. Preconceived notions are abandoned and trust increases among teammates as different strengths are respected. Individuals also accept responsibility for the group's success, which facilitates interactions and constructive feedback. Additionally, creativity rises and people begin to feel good about being part of an effective group. Leaders should promote individual responsibility and schedule a team building event to capitalize on the group dynamic. The performing stage is not always achieved. When a team does reach this level, it is achieving goals without friction. Morale and group loyalty are high. Individuals assume a people-orientated approach and take on roles to satisfy the changing needs to the group. The leader should delegate as much as possible and focus on other goals. The adjourning phase comes when a project ends or team members move on. This period may be greeted with enthusiasm for accomplishing a goal, anxiety as members look to an uncertain future, or even depression over a loss of camaraderie. The leader should facilitate a final meeting or activity to leave a positive, lasting impression. In conclusion, Tuckman documented five stages of group development, forming, storming, norming, performing and adjoining. Leaders can use this tool to improve a team's performance by recognising behaviours related to each stage and taking action to help members move forward. Team 6 is... Josh. Richard. Mona. Created using Powtoon.